Hello and welcome to the Invent with Scratch screencast. I'm Al Swigert and in this screencast we're going to make a small double jump demo. So in this program we can move the cat to the left and right using the left and right arrow keys and we can press the space bar to cause the cat to jump up. But not only that, we can also have the cat do double jumps. So I'm going to show you how this program is put together step by step. So let's start up the Scratch editor by clicking on create. And since this is the first screencast, I'll go over some really basic Scratch things. Uh, so this area here on the left is the stage. We have all the sprites that appear in the program are on the stage. And we can also see all the sprites down here in the sprites area. We can pick up the sprite with the mouse and move it anywhere we want. This center area has all of the code blocks that we can add to our program. The code blocks will program the behavior of all the different sprites. And this area on the right is where we put the code blocks. So just to start off, I'm going to go to the brown events section and grab this when green flag clicked block. And I'll increase the size of this to make it easier to see. So the program execution will start at this top block right here and then continue down through any blocks below it. So the first thing I'm going to add is from the orange control section and it'll be this forever block. The forever block will execute all of the code blocks in it in a loop forever over and over and over again. So the first thing I'm going to have is let's program this cat to move to the right whenever the right arrow key is pressed. So I'm going to add this if block from the orange control section. And then for the condition socket right here, I'm going to go to the light blue sensing category and grab this key space pressed. But I don't want the space key to be the key that's pressed. I want the right arrow key to be pressed. So click on the black triangle and select right arrow from the menu. So now if the key, if the right arrow key is pressed, then the Scratch program will execute any code blocks inside this if block right here. So I'm going to go to Motion, and the code that we want to execute will be this change x by 10. This will change the x coordinate position of the cat sprite by 10 pixels. So let's start this program out. I'll click on the green flag to start the program, and then press on the right arrow key. We can see the cat moves over to the right. Now, the cat doesn't do anything when I press the left arrow key or any of the other keys because we haven't added that code yet, but I can pick up the cat with the mouse cursor and place him back over there. So I'll click on the red stop button to stop the program. Let's add some more code to this. Uh, moving to the right is nice, but we should also be able to move to the left. So what we want to do is go to the orange control section and add another if block right here. But actually, we can do a shortcut. If I right-click on the if block and select duplicate, it'll duplicate all of the code blocks connected to it. Then I can just stick that inside the forever block underneath the first right. And then I just make some simple changes. Right here, I'll change this to left arrow. And since I want the sprite to move to the left, I'll change this to negative 10. So now when I click on the green flag, I can move both to the left and to the right. But it's kind of weird that the cat just sort of moonwalks backwards whenever we move the cat to the left. Let's add some more code so that the cat is facing in the direction it walks. So back in the dark blue motion category, I'm going to grab this point and direction block. And just put that at the top right here. So 90 degrees is facing to the right, which is what we want when the right arrow key is pressed. When I grab another one of these point and direction blocks and put it in the left arrow, if block, I want it to point to the left, which will be negative 90 degrees. So now whenever I click on the right or left arrow, it does two things. It points the sprite in a certain direction, and then it changes the X position. So I'll click on the green flag to test this program out, and going to the right, and going to the left, and that's kind of weird. Now instead of moonwalking, the cat's just sort of walking on its face. That's not healthy. Now the reason it's doing that is if we click on the info button here for this sprite, we can see that this short little blue line shows which direction the sprite is facing. So I'll click on the green flag. When I go right, you can see it's pointed to the right in the 90 degree section. And when I go left, it's pointing in the negative 90 degree section. And I can also just grab this 
blue stick with the mouse and rotate the sprite around. So you can see when it's facing the right, the cat is right side up, but as we rotate it over, you can see why it's upside down when it's facing to the left. So we can fix this by setting the rotation style to the left-right style by clicking on this blue button right here. And so now, the cat will only be facing right side up to the left or right. I'll just use the arrow keys to move the cat around. That works pretty well. I'll click on this triangle to close the info panel. Next, we should move this cat down to the ground so the cat's not walking through midair. And we also want to have a walking animation. We don't want it to just look like the cat is gliding left and right. And you'll notice if you click on the costumes tab in the center right here, this sprite comes with two different costumes. Now costumes are different ways that a sprite can look. So these are the same sprite, but the sprite can change its appearance by activating a different costume. And you can see if we switch back and forth between these, we get a little walking animation. Now we can have our program change the costumes by adding some code blocks from the purple looks category. There's a code block right here that says next costume. So let's add that into this if block and then add another next costume for the if block going to the left. Now when we click on the green flag and test this out, it actually looks like the cat's walking left and right. And I'll click on the red stop button to stop the program. So this is pretty good, but now we want it so that the cat can actually start moving up and down, and not just that, but also jump up and fall down in a realistic manner. So to do that, we're going to go to the orange control section, and I'll grab this if else block and put it in underneath right here. So we want this code block to do two different things. One, if the cat is up in the air up here, we want the cat to start falling down to the ground. And if the cat is below the ground level, we want the cat just to be at the normal ground level. And we'll say that the normal ground level is right here at negative 130 for the Y position. Remember the Y coordinates are the coordinates that go up and down. The X coordinates go left and right. So we need to add some code that says if the Y position of this cat is ever less than negative 129 degrees, then we'll know that the cat is beneath the ground level. And so we'll want to move the cat directly to negative 130. So go to the green operator section and grab this less than sign and then go to the blue motion category, and at the bottom, you'll find this Y position bubble. Now the value in this Y position bubble will be whatever the Y value of the sprite is currently. And on the right side, we can just type in negative 129. So in this case, we want the falling speed of the cat to be zero, and then just move the cat right to the ground level. So first, we're going to create something called a variable, and that'll be done in the orange data section. Variables are blocks that can contain a number that we specify, and then we can use that number later in our programs. I'll show you what I mean. First, we have to create the variable by clicking on the make a variable button, and we'll call this variable falling speed. I'll go into what for all sprites and for this sprite only mean uh, in a future screencast, but for right now, just have for all sprites selected and click OK. So now that we've created a variable, a whole bunch of new blocks open up to us. The first thing that we're going to want to do in our program is set this falling speed to be the number zero. So we can grab this set variable block and we'll put it at the very start of the program, right underneath when the green flag is clicked, but above the forever loop. That way, at the very beginning of our program, this variable will be set to the number zero. We also want the falling speed variable to be set to zero whenever the cat is underneath the ground. I'll go into the reasons why later. But let's grab this set falling speed block and put that inside the if block. And then we also want to set the position to negative 130. So grab set y and change this number to negative 130. Now in the else block, this code will be executed if this condition right here is false. What that means for y position less than negative 129 is the code in the else part will be executed if the sprite is above the ground level 
above negative 130. And what we want to do in that case is decrease the falling speed variable by 2, and then also change the y position of the cat by the number that's in falling speed. So first I'll go to the orange data section and grab this change block and set this to negative 2. So remember the set falling speed variable will just set the variable directly to this value that's in the white box, whereas change falling speed will increase or in this case, since we have a negative number, decrease the number that's in the falling speed variable. This is a lot like how change x will change the current x position by this number, whereas a set x or set y block will actually set it directly to this value. And next, from the dark blue motion category, grab a change y by block and put it inside the else block. We don't want to change it by this number 10. We actually want to change the y position by whatever the number is in falling speed. So go to the orange data section and grab this falling speed variable and replace the number 10 with it. Now if we click the green flag, we can see that the cat falls straight to the ground. Let's try that again. I'll just set the cat up here, have the cat fall straight to the ground. So what's happening here is that whenever the cat is above the negative 130 ground area, this condition is false. So falling speed will be changed by negative two. Remember at the start of the program, falling speed is set to zero. So when we change falling speed by negative two, it gets set to negative two, since zero plus negative two is negative two. And then we change y by whatever value is in falling speed. And since falling speed is a negative number, that means the cat moves downward. And then the next time this loop happens, this condition is still false, so we change falling speed by negative 2 again, and since falling speed was negative 2, it then becomes negative 4. And so we change y by negative 4, and that moves the cat faster than before. And then on the next time, falling speed changes to negative 6, and then on the next time it changes to negative 8, all until the cat is below the ground level, at which point its y position will be less than negative 129. At that point, we don't want the cat to be underground, we want the cat to be at the exact ground level of negative 130, so we set the y to negative 130, and to keep the cat from falling anymore, we set falling speed to zero. You can see the current value in falling speed, it goes by pretty fast right here though. So you can see it started off at zero, and then you could tell that the number was becoming more and more negative until finally the cat sprite hit the bottom at which point this code block sets it to zero. So I'm gonna shrink this down by clicking on that arrow so that we have more space for the code. And let's add code that causes this cat to jump up. So I'm gonna go to the brown events category and grab this when space key pressed block. Now the code in that is underneath this block will execute whenever we press the space key. And to have the cat sprite jump, all we need to do is go to the orange data section and set the falling speed to a positive number. Let's say something like 20. That way, whenever the cat is in midair, the cat's falling speed will be a positive number. So when this change y by falling speed block is executed, the cat actually moves upward because falling speed is a positive number and adding to the y position will move this cat sprite up. And we'll also change y by the falling speed right here. That'll push the cat off of the ground level and up into the air so that the code in this part of the if-else block gets executed. So let's test this out. I'll click on the green flag, I can move the cat left and right, and then when I press the space key, the cat moves up and then starts moving back down to the ground. The reason why this code does that is because falling speed will be set to 20, which puts the cat up in the air. But since the cat's up in the air, falling speed will be changed by negative 2 each time this forever loop loops around. 
So that means falling speed will be 20, then 18, then 16, then 14. So the cat's still going up, but it's going up slower and slower. And then finally, falling speed will go to 2 and then to 0, at which point the cat stops rising up. And then in future loops through, the falling speed variable becomes negative. It'll become negative 2, negative 4, negative 6. So the cat starts going downwards faster and faster until the cat goes back to the ground. And that's what's happening here. The problem though with this is that we can just keep pressing the space key over and over and over again and just kind of have the cat fly around. That's not very realistic. We need to add some code so that this code right here is only run if the cat is standing on the ground. We can do that by pulling this off, going to the control section, and adding an if condition. And the condition is if the cat's on the ground, which means if the cat's Y position is negative 130. So in the green operator section, grab this equal sign. And then in the dark blue motion category, grab that Y position bubble. And then just type negative 130. So the jumping code only gets executed if the cat is on the ground. So if we press the space bar while the cat's up in the air here, nothing happens. So I'll press space, and the cat can only jump when the cat's on the ground. That's pretty good, but we want to implement double jumping. So to do that, first we're going to create a new variable. So go to the orange data section and click make a variable. And we'll call this variable double jumped. And the double jumped variable will keep track of if the cat has already done a double jump after jumping. So what we want this to be is, actually, we want to get rid of this if block and replace it with an if else. So let's just drag this condition code over to the if and put that there. We can delete this block by just dragging it over the center area. So at the very start of the program, let's set double jumped to be the value false. So variables can not only contain numbers, they can also contain text. And so this code causes the cat to jump up, if, but only if the cat's on the ground. Otherwise, if the cat's up in the air when the space key was pressed, the code in here will be executed. And we want that code to also check. So we want that code to check if the cat has done a double jump yet. And we'll say that the double jumped variable will be set to false if the cat hasn't, and true if the cat has. So in the green operator section, grab this equal sign. In the data section, grab that double jumped variable. And only if double jumped is equal to false do we want the cat to jump again. We can just copy this jumping code right here by right clicking on that and selecting duplicate. And putting that in there. And then we don't want the cat to be able to do another double jump until it's fallen back onto the ground again. So in here, in this part of the if else block, we'll add another self, uh, set double jumped block that says false. And after the cat does this double jump, we want to set the double jumped variable to be equal to true. That way the cat can't do another double jump after that. So grab this set block and set double jump to true. Now if we test this out, you can see the double jumped variable here. When I click the green flag, the program begins, and so double jump is set to false. And when I do a single jump, double jump is still set to false, but when I do the double jump, then double jump is set to true. And so if I click on, a, on the space key a third time in that jump, We'll notice that, well, the cat's in midair, so it jumps to the else part, but then it'll see that double jump will be equal to true, which means that this condition is false, so it skips that jump code and then ends up doing nothing, and that's why we can't do a triple jump. So that's the entire program. Thanks for watching.